One of my favorite animals is the African wild dog. It was previously the eagle. And I routinely study the African wild dog because the African wild dog is the most productive animal when it comes to hunting in the kingdom. And as a Christian, we want to be productive. The word of God declares, be fruitful, multiply, and subdue. And when you talk about multiplication, we talk about being fruitful, that's production. So we're not talking about just getting things done, not just execution, but consistently executing at a high level. We want to be producers, which means you want to produce something in the environment. So that way, when you leave this earth, the earth knows that you were here. See, sometimes we, we live life and we're not truly living, we're just breathing to death. And we got to understand that Jesus Christ didn't just die for our sins. He died so we can have life more abundantly. So you're supposed to have the abundant life. Financially, the abundant life. Physically, the abundant life. Not, not, not the mediocre life, not the average life. But you're supposed to have the abundant life. And in order to live in abundance, we have to be productive. We have to produce. And so as I was studying the African wild dog, I, you know, I, I, I try to study, like, what, what makes them so productive? What makes them the most successful hunter in the wild? Like, like more successful than a, than a lion or the, or the cheetah. More successful than the leopard or the, the, the black panther. Like, they're the most successful animal. And if you look at the animals, sometimes you, you might not even realize you're looking at an African wild dog because they resemble the hyena. And so I'm studying the African wild dog. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, to Ohio State. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, to Clemson, and, and I'm going to the Minnesota Vikings, and, and, I, and I'm talking about the African wild dog. I'm going to CD4 Auto Group. I'm going to different corporations, and, and I'm breaking down the African wild dog because they said we want our company to be more productive. And I remember when I was in the room with the Minnesota Vikings, all these NFL athletes, and, I, and I'm talking to them. I remember them frantically writing with their pens and pencils. I remember them just writing and taking notes because they understand that if they don't continue to produce, they're going to lose their job. I, I, want you to, I want you to catch what, what, what I'm saying right now. If they, they realize that, that, that they don't produce, then there's a high likelihood that they're going to be replaced. And so, I, and so I, I encourage you to praise God and to thank God for his grace and mercy because what we got to understand that in the circular world, in corporate America, in sports, when you don't produce, you're replaced. What if God replaced you when you didn't produce? What if God was doing an audit every, every 24 hours, every 86,400 seconds? What if God was doing an audit of your life? Oh, you didn't produce it. I got to replace you. Because your job replaces you when you don't produce. Your team replaces you when you don't produce. Sometimes, be very careful, sometimes you go to certain environments and they say you've been producing, but you have not been consistently producing. Let's sit down. We got to do a review of your production. What if God was sitting down with the angels every 24 hours looking at your life and saying, okay, has she been producing consistently? I oh, know she, she was sick today. She didn't produce. She, she was in a bad mood today. She didn't produce. Her husband got on her nerves today. She didn't produce. And what if God said, okay, because you didn't produce for five days straight, I'm going, I'm going to cut you. But because of God's grace and mercy, God said that God said, when you repent, I will forgive you and I will forget. Which means he's forgetting, he's forgiving, he's forgetting that you, you didn't produce yesterday. So today is another opportunity. Today is another 86,400 seconds for you to do what? For you to produce. An African wild dog, when they hunt, they use what's called predation, exhaustation. And when they hunt, they understand that they're going to hunt their prey not on strength, not on speed, but we're going to hunt our prey knowing that we're going to exhaust our prey so much so that our prey will quit because they're exhausted. The African wild dog says, I'm going to outwork you. I have competitive stamina. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going until I get my goal, until I get my objective. Some of you quit after 24 hours. Some of you quit after 72 hours. But the African wild dog says when it begins its hunt, it begins with the end in mind which means that when I get married, which means that, that when, when I start a job, which means that when I say I'm going to do something, I own it. You want to rent responsibility, you have to own responsibility. You got to own it. And most of us don't produce on a consistent level because we rent responsibility. We say, okay, I'm going to take care of it today, but tomorrow, I, you know what, I'm leaving, I'm going someplace else. But when you own something, 
When something breaks down, you got to take care of it. When you own something, something's not going right. It's your responsibility. This is my house. You can't call nobody else. Like something, the, the pipe's busted. Remember when my wife and I got our first house? She was like, babe, we got to go take you. I said, can we? She said, she said no. She said, TJ, we own, we own, we own this. You got to fix it. There's no, there's no landlord recalling. We, you, you, we, you got to you own responsibility. It's on you. You're not blaming nobody else. Well, she didn't or well, he didn't know. It's yours. Own it. And the rough African wild dog owns the responsibility of the hunt as a group. And they say to themselves, when we start this hunt, we know that we're going to hunt this animal until the animal gives up. Not until we get tired. Not until we get wounded. Not until somebody doesn't believe in us. We're going to hunt this animal until the animal gives up. And most times, the animal will give up before an hour. But the longest hunt they have on record for African wild dogs, one hour. You're lying, five minutes. Some of you lions, you big, you ferocious, you aggressive, you go after real hard for about 10 days. And when you don't get your result, you, go, you, just, you okay, we're going to try this instead. Oh, oh, you got a plan A, you got a plan B, you got a plan C, you got a plan D, you got a plan E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, O, P. You got a whole bunch of plans. You ain't done plan A yet. Because you don't have any competitive stamina. I remember, ladies and gentlemen, when, 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 when I played football, some of my athletes in the room might know what I'm talking about. We would walk, we would, we would walk into, in, into the Turf Bay area and we would come in for, 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 for training at, at 5 o'clock in the morning. And you come in, you, my athletes, you know you come in, you don't have the same, you come in like. What we got today, coach? And you know you never ask coach. You never ask coach what you're doing. You never ask coach how many you got. Because if you ask him how many he got, you're doing more. You just keep your mouth shut, you keep your head down, and you just compete. I remember one day, Rodney, we walked in to, to the turf bay, and coach had trash cans in each corner of the turf bay. I look at my home, but my man got trash. We, 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 we eating today? We eating after the, the workout? Coach bringing in snacks? Like, now you know coach ain't cut like that. So I went up to call that coach. What, what, what's the trash cans for? He said, you'll see. And when coach say, you, you, you'll see, that you, uh, you, you better be worried. You better be worried. And we began to run. We began to compete. This was Brian Kelly, the head coach of LSU right now. We began to run. We began to compete. And as we're running and competing, after about 30 minutes, Guys was doing like this. After about an hour, guys is doing like this. After about two, yes, I said two hours. I know he brought some NCAA rules. After about two hours, you see guys. I said, oh, oh, that's what the trash cans was for. You got about 10, 15 guys over in the trash can throwing up, and as they're throwing up, they're contemplating if they're really about this life. So you think I'm talking football, but, I, but I'm talking Christianity. I'm talking the walk. See, some of you got baptized, got saved. You read your Bible, go to church, but you're not really about this life. Because when you become a Christian, it doesn't mean that you don't face obstacles. It doesn't mean you don't face trials and tribulations. It means that we respond to them differently. E plus R equals O. The event plus your response equals your outcome. As Christians, we respond different. As Christians, our R is different than the world. We go through the same trials. We go through the same. My wife get on my nerves like I get on that person's nerves. Your husband get, it's the same, but we respond differently. And I got it. I said, Coach, after practice, I said, Coach, you didn't make me throw up. I said, I, I contemplated quitting because I ain't even going to lie. I'm not a quitter. But that day I said, you know what? Maybe I'm a to quitter today. But I said, Coach, my homeboy grabbed me. And my homeboy said, we're not going to quit today. Listen to me very carefully. My homeboy grabbed me. Uh, my, my, my son's godfather, JK, he grabbed me. He said, TJ, you got to keep pushing. He said, TJ, you can't quit. He said, TJ, you can't give in. You're a senior. You've been here for four, five years. You can't quit now. Listen to me very carefully. African wild dogs are the most productive animals in the wild for two reasons, right? Because they have competitive stamina and they have people, I'm sorry, they have dogs around them who won't let them quit. Oh, you missed what I just said. African wild dog, they run as a pack, and they have a pack of dogs around them who also have competitive stamina. Are you the only person in your pack who has competitive stamina? 
Do you got people in your pack who are having pity parties for you or who are having production parties for you? Oh, you missed that. You missed that. We're not going to have a pity party. We're going to have a production party. When we come together, we're going to say, what did you produce today? What did you produce today? You didn't produce. Well, let's figure out why you didn't produce. But you're busy having pity parties, feeling sorry for yourself. You can't grow feeling sorry for yourself. When you go to practice and we break down the film, is it a feel sorry party? No, coach said, TJ, what are you doing right here? I don't, I don't even, I, I probably shouldn't say this on, on live, but I'm going to say it on live. I was talking to Xavier. He said, he, he, said he, he was at practice one day and, and coach looked at a kid. He's like, I don't even, I don't even know how, how you got on this team. Now, that sounds hard, don't it? Uh, that's a little bit rough, coach. I don't even know. I don't even know how you made it on the team. You, you, you're not doing the fundamentals right. You're not doing the basics right. Ladies and gentlemen, the fundamentals of being a Christian is competitive stamina. That's the fundamentals. That's, that's one plus one equals two. You're trying to read Hebrew and Greek. You're trying to be deep in Revelation. You don't even got competitive stamina. You can't even last five days praising God. You can't even go five days without complaining. You can't even go five days without saying, you know what, God? I believed you for the first four days, but nothing happened. Maybe God, maybe God not going to do it. Exhausting predation. See very carefully. The cheetah, pursuit, predation. The lion, ambush, predation. The African wild dog, exhaustion, predation. So let's break this down. We want to learn to master the art of enduring, right? And I, and I love it. I, t- I, t- I, sent the, I sent the title to Uncle Chuck. I said, Uncle Chuck, I got it. Competitive stamina, mastering the art, the art of, of, of enduring. Uh, he's like, well, uh, he said, nephew, we probably want to go with in- endurance because that's more grammatically <laughs> correct. I said, okay, I, that's how I talk. Enduring, endurance, enduring. I'm not sure, but the, the, the people will get it. Like, I'm not a scholar like that, but we'll do endurance or enduring, whatever sounds better for you. Amen. So I want you to understand, right, in order to be productive, you have to have a production strategy. Write that down. In order to be productive, you have to have a production strategy. When you look at a 100-meter dash, everybody that runs a 100-meter dash, when they, get to the, when they get to the race, everybody wants to win. Amen? There's nobody in the block that says, I'm just in the block. I'm just here to be here. There's nobody here. To, is, let me, let's pause, right? Let me slow down. I just want to make sure. Is anybody here just to be here? Is anybody on earth just because you want, are you here to produce or are you here just to be here? Raise your hand. I just want to see who's here to produce. Raise your hand. Yeah, raise your hand. I just want to see it. Okay, hands down. So some of you are here to produce. Some of you are here just because you're here. It's missing me very carefully. I'm here to produce. I'm here to live the abundant life. I'm here to leave my mark on earth. And in order to do that, you have to have what's called a production strategy. The lion's production strategy is ambush. The cheetah's production strategy is pursuit. The African wild dog's production strategy is exhaustion. I'm going to hunt you until you're exhausted. That's their production strategy, and that's why they're 85% successful. The lion, 20%. 20%. 20% success. And listen very carefully. I know nobody in here wants 20% success. Amen? All right, let's go, let's go to the word. Let's go to the word. All right, listen very carefully. I want to break this down for y'all. All right? So competitive stamina, let's break this down, all right? Some of you say, okay, I, I get it past it, but what does this mean? Being relentless. We can go home right there. <laughs> yeah. Being relentless, as in having a relentless work ethic. So I, I don't get off when I get off. I get off when it's done. Yeah. It's the opposite of being or feeling fatigued. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Mama Lisa, it's the opposite of being or feeling fatigue. Feeling fatigue or feeling energetic for a prolonged period of time. Feeling energetic for a prolonged period of time. Competitive stamina is relentless work ethic. Galatians 6 9. So, why is this important? In the word it says, let us not become weary in well-doing. For in the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. 
So you say you want something, you complaining to God, you praying to God, you fast and saying, God, I've been working for this, I've been praying for this, I don't know why I don't have it. The reason why you don't have it is because you gave up. You said, Pastor, I didn't give up. No, you didn't give up fully, but you gave up partially. You was giving 120 for the first five weeks, and then you started giving 100. When you went to 90, you went to 80. So you essentially gave up. If you're not giving all, you're not giving anything. If you're not all in, you're all out. You're either hot or you're cold, not lukewarm. You can't be a lukewarm Christian and expect a hot blessing. <laughs> you can't be a lukewarm Christian and expect a hot blessing. Listen very carefully. You can't stop being lukewarm. Either you're with it or you're not with it. Either you're about this life or you're not about this life. But you have to choose. The word of God says, if you faint not. Pastor preached last week about the harvest. We talked about the harvest. And you praying for your harvest, but you're not getting your harvest because you keep giving up. Principle number one, life is a series of sprints. Life is a series of sprints, not a single marathon. Ha, <laughs> You see, very careful. I, I know this goes against what some of you have heard and believe, but God put this on my heart. And the reason why he put it on my heart is because some of us, we run in marathons and we just, I got time. I got time. I got, what if you don't got time? What if you don't got time? You got to, you, listen, you, you, you got to beat them to the spot. Come on, my athletes, we, we don't got time. We, we don't have time to waste. I don't know, I don't know when my last breath is going to be. I don't have time to waste. It's not a marathon. It's a series of sprints. Because when you sprint, you're going what? You're going all out. You're going all out. So my marriage is not a marathon. My marriage is a series of sprints, which means that I got to go all out on Monday. I got to go all out on Tuesday. I just go all out. I take a break. I go all out. I take a break. But it's not me just taking my, well, we'll get better eventually. We'll work on it tomorrow. I'll read more next week. I'll do better next time. We have high let me say it this way. We have exceptional expectations and we got mediocre standards. You praying to God about your expectations, God's looking at you and talking about your standards. Oh, you missed that. You missed that. Let, let me do this. Let me, let me do this. Let, let me go. D Dr. Simone, and, and this is not a secret anymore. Everybody knows that I'm in a PhD program. Dr. Simone, I, I, my, my very first class in the PhD program, I, I, it, was, it, was, it was rough. I, mean, I ain't been to school for a minute. It was rough, and I was studying. I was, I was, I was doing my papers, and, and at the end of the class, I was super excited. I, I called Trey, Zay, and Vonzel, my three boys. I told Valissa, I think I might have told, I said, guys, man, my first class, I got a B minus. Let's go. Woo! I was pumped. I got to beat my, I, I, maybe the, I know y'all smart, right? But I, my IQ ain't real high. But I got to beat Coco. I'm like, man, I got to beat. Let's go. My wife said, I got an 82%. Let's go. Woo! I started, I started preparing for my next class, and, 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 and they call me. Like, like what's up? Like, yeah, you're going to have to retake that class. I said, no, 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 no. I got I to gotta, I gotta be minus right there, 82%. Oh, she said, sir, you, you, go back and read the syllabus. Jalen, I was like, what do you, what you mean the syllabus? I've been in school, uh, uh, elementary school, middle school, like high school, right, college, you know what I'm saying, Jay? I, I got my master's in divinity, study religion. Like, what you mean? I, I, I don't need to read I know. They said, no, no, no. In the PhD program, you got to get 84 or higher for a B. I paid for this class. What you mean? Hold on, time out. I said, can, 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 I, can I petition this or something like that? Like, I was like, whoa, I'll tell, I, I, I ain't Trey. Your daddy had an 82. Let's go. It's like, yeah, congratulations. That's a C minus. That's a C, that's a C plus. I said, what, who changed the standard? They said, oh no. They said, oh no, sir. You, 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 you trying to get a PhD. That less than 2%, I think it's 3% people in the world have a PhD. Less than 1% African Americans have a PhD. This is a whole new level, which means it's a whole nother standard. What, 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 what passed in middle school don't pass at the PhD level. Oh, y'all missing it. What passed in high school don't pass at the PhD level. What, 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 what passed in undergrad 
don't pass a PhD level. See very carefully. You're praying for an exceptional, pressed out, run over blessing, but you, 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 you got an average, mediocre standard. The standard that was required to get what you got yesterday is not the standard that's required to get what you want tomorrow. You're trying to level up, but your standard's not changing. Oh, God, I want to level up. God, like, okay, it's a higher standard. Well, I, well God, I don't really want that standard. I, I, just, I, want, I, just want, I want that without the standard. No, no, no. You can't get that without. So, I, so, so let's see very carefully. I just retook the class. And I said, okay, I, I know the standard now. <laughs> I know the standard. Every, every, every assignment, I'm like, okay, well, okay what what I get? I, I, I got to stay. I got to be above it. I, okay, what did I get? And, and, and listen very carefully. I, I had a paper that was due uh, a couple of days ago. I'm on, I went on spring break on Friday. I had a paper that was due, and as I was, as I was typing my paper, and I was looking at my score, I told, I told my wife, I said, listen, right now, currently, I got an 87 in the class. In my last assignment, my last paper with 100 points, I said, I can, I can just not even do it, and I got to be. I'm good to go. My wife said, no, don't you? She said, no, you better finish. Oh, you didn't hear? My wife said, you better. You got to have African and wild, wild dogs around you that said, no, no, you got to finish. You, you, can't, you can't slide back. If you're going to be excellent or you're going to be average, we're not doing mediocre. You got to keep pushing. You, can, you can't slide back. And I knew when I mentioned it to her, I said, man, I, I knew I should have told Vanessa because she's going to tell me to keep going. I knew not to call, see very carefully, we had to have, I forgot what they call it, like a mentor in the PhD program. I remember when I was going through, when I realized I failed, I called to me, like, to me, to me, she's like, yep, yep, mm -hmm. your PhD program is, yep, it's, it's a different standard, pastor. Call me if you need to pray. <laughs> I'm going to need to pray to me. It's a different standard. Life is not a marathon, it's sprints. You got to sprint and you got to take a break. You have to go all out at all times. So when I finish my paper, see very carefully, I finish my paper on Thursday night, it was due Friday. So I'm going to finish it early, I'm going to make sure it's great. I went to my wife, I said, I said, sweetheart, I got an A. She said, you got your results back yet? I said, no. I got an A. Oh, you missed what I just said. I, I, I don't need the, the professor to grade it. I already know what it is. And as a matter of fact, I'm, the PhD program I'm in at Liberty, at, I, I always, and, and Liberty does all their, their courses around the Bible. And in, in the program, when I turned to my last paper, my professor said to me, he said, he said, you are on a great pace right now. Keep it up and finish. You're on your way to an A. Finish. It's a sprint. It's not a marathon. Stop taking your time to get it done because tomorrow's not promised. Your obedience is connected to somebody's breakthrough. There's some kid out there right now that's going to get a breakthrough by me doing what God's called me to do. You got to be obedient and take ownership of your standards. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16, be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every what? Every opportunity. Making the most of every opportunity for the days are evil. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why it's a sprint and not a marathon, because you have the most of every single opportunity. We all don't get the same opportunities, but we all get an opportunity. When your time on this earth comes, that moment for you to change the world, will you be prepared? Will your opportunity of a lifetime find you prepared or will it find you unprepared? Hold on, hold on, God. I'm coming. Hold on, I'm coming. No, 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 no. They didn't, they didn't close the door. It's too late. You wasn't ready. You wasn't prepared. So here's what I, listen, so let, 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 let's pause. Like, I said, Pastor, like, like, like why? So, so here's what I learned. When Jesus was a young boy at 12, he went and he sat with the rulers and he listened and, 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 he, and he had conversation. He was preparing for his ministry. Then the word of God declares that he went back with his mother and father at home, and we didn't hear about him for a long period of time. But the word of God says that during that time, he grew in stature, he grew in favor with God and with man. So it's our responsibility to grow in favor, not just with God, but with man as well. Not just with man, but with God as well. And I want you to catch this. When, when, when Jesus Christ, right, when it was time for him to go into his ministry, it says that he was led by the Spirit to be tested. 
So I asked God, I said, God, like, 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 why, why are you allowing me to go through so much trials and tribulations? Like, why do I have to keep going through it? And, and what God placed on my heart about two weeks ago was this. You don't learn for the sake of learning. You learn for the sake of mastery. You saying like, you, you like God, like, I, I learned my lesson, God. I'm ready to go to the next level. God said, you learned your lesson, but you haven't mastered the lesson. So we think that we learn it just to learn, and, but that, that's, that's not what it's about. You learn it to master it, which means when you master it, you don't got to think about it. You can get on a bike and ride a bike like it was yesterday, even if you rode it in, in five years, because you've mastered the concept. You've mastered what God wants you to learn. Some of you are going through the same issues because you have not mastered the lesson. You learned it, but you ain't mastered it. Oh, y'all missed it. I, I, I said last week, I think Rodney gave a testimony. I said last week, I said, I said, I said, I said last week, that you don't know if you really overcome something until you get tested. I, 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 I'm a recovering angerholic. Not alcoholic, but angerholic. Like, I look, I look, I'm, I'm a recovering, explosive person. I had an explosive attitude. I got in trouble a lot in middle school. I was suspended the second, third day of kindergarten. I was forgetting the fight. I had a very explosive but I got saved. I got my master's divinity. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm saved. God, like, all right, hold on. <laughs> hold on. I got, hold on. Hold, slow down. You, you, you've been reading emotional intelligence. That's cute. God, like, hold on. Let me, let me send somebody to, to piss you off. Let me send somebody, let me send somebody to cut you off. Let me send somebody to come to talk about your wife. Like, what you, God, like, whoa. God, like, whoa. God, like, ah, ah. But God, I learned the lesson. You did, but you didn't master it. You didn't master it. You don't know if you truly overcome until you test it. And when you test it and you fail, now you're like, okay, God, I got to go back because I ain't like, but God, no, 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 no. Go to church, read the word. That's all cute, but you got to master the lesson. 90 30 rule. I'm going to help somebody out right now. I'm going to help somebody out right now. Listen, I want, I, I want to teach for a second, right? Praise God, Carl. <laughs> I got my good eyes on today. The human body. <laughs> I was, I was about to sit on the step right here, but I'm not sure if that, that's going to do good for people on, online, right? The human body operates on cycles called alternating rhythms. According to research, during each of these cycles, there is a peak when we are most energized and a period when we are exhausted. I'm going to pause. I just want to teach for a second. You are most active in the morning. Your brain can only focus for 90 to 120 minutes at a time. Afterward, a 20, 30 minute renewal break is required to perform at the same level of performance, according to research. During a productive sprint, let me say that again. During a, sprint, during a productive marathon, no, I'm sorry. During a productive sprint, you focus only on one task at a time and you avoid distractions. Each sprint has a specific goal, and at the end of the sprint, signals a break to relax and set up for the next sprint. <laughs> so when I was in school, what I realized in school was that I would sit down, I would do work for two, three hours long. And when I would get into hour two, or hour three, my work wasn't the same because I was tired. I didn't have the same focus. I didn't have the same energy. So what I learned was, I, and, I, I, and I got it from Nikki, Nikki Saunders, right? N Nikki said, TJ, you got to do what's called a 90-minute 90, 90 sprint. I said, Nikki, what's that? She said, a 90-minute sprint. You work for 90 minutes, and then you take a 30-minute break. And when you take a 30-minute break, you go to a different part of the house, you take a break, stay off social media, you rest your eyes, and when it's time to go back to work, you go back to work in a different environment, in the house or at your job, but not in the same place. So listen very carefully. If our minds need a break after 90 minutes, I'm just going to pause. I, that's okay. Some of y'all sleep. It's okay. I know it's early, right? If, I, if according to research, our minds need a break after 90 minutes, then why spiritually, why physically are we not taking breaks? We just running. We just marathon. Just running. Just running. But those who are sprinting, break, sprinting, break, sprinting, break, they passing you. They get every single opportunity and you're missing it because you're just taking your time. Work overload is a distraction. Work overload is a distraction. So you have to learn not to overload yourself with work. 
whether it be spiritually, whether it be your job, whatever it may be, work overload is a distraction. When you get stressed, you feel depressed, you feel like I can't do it anymore, I'm ready to give up, I'm exhausted, it's because of work overload. Some of us don't work, some of us work too hard, some of us work too hard too long. Figure out where you are. Figure out where you are. It's a great character. I, 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 I love it. Uh, some of us, we, we, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm not going to do that, Carl. Carl, Carl spend time on these slides. I'm not going to go to slide 12, right? See, very carefully. We have to learn to work according to God's will, not according to our will. The word of God says, I will never give you more than you can bear. So you feel like you have more than you can bear is because you put it on you, not God. Oh, y'all missed that. Can I tell y'all a secret? Write this down, right? The most important word, is Uncle Chuck in here today? The most important word in the English dictionary is no. And you got to learn to say it like, no. How do I do, Uncle Chuck? How, how do I do? How, how do I do, Diddy? Right, Diddy said, smile is not natural for me, right? Just, no. No. No will move you closer to your destiny than yes will. It's what you're able to say no to that's going to take you to where you're supposed to be. Because if you say yes to everything, you're going to miss the most important thing. I love it. As, as little kids, I, I think I had Trey. We were in a store, and, and, and Trey was, might have been, actually, well, actually, actually it was Zay, because Zay's one with the smart mouth, right? Zay, we were in a store, and Zay was about eight years old, and Zay's like, Dad, can I have some? And, and I was like, no, I don't got any money. <laughs> Trina, he was like, Dad, can I? I said, I don't have any money, son. I don't have no money. And, and, and then I, I'm going through the store. I get about five items. We go, we go to the cash register, and I'm, putting, I'm scanning it. I pull out my car, and Zay go. I thought you didn't have no money. I looked at him, I said, I ain't had no money for that. And I ain't had no money for you. But I got money for this. I heard I had to learn the power of no. Because no is going to protect me. When you say yes to too many people and too many things, you get overloaded, and that's a distraction because now you can't hear God telling you what to do because your life is too noisy. You being God to everybody else, and God ain't got time to be God to you. It's okay. I'm going to let that breathe. Maybe I'm the only one that's, that, that was, I'm a recovering, I know I'm recovering from a lot, I know. I'm a recovering people pleaser, Morgan. You need help, I got you. You need help, I got you. Why? I, I, I ask myself, Morgan, like, why do I do that? Because it felt good to be needed. It felt good for people to be like, TJ's always there for me. And God like, bro, you God all by yourself. Keep doing you. Why would they need God when they got you? And you don't need me because you evidently, evidently you, you out for the maker, TJ. Keep doing you, TJ. God, I'm drained. I'm spent. I know you drained. You spent because you're not omnipotent. You're not all powerful. You're not omniscient. You're not all knowing. You're not omnipresent. God, I'm exhausted. I've been taking care of her and taking care of him and taking care of her. Oh, he said, "You're not." He said, "You're tired because you're not omnipresent." I'm omnipresent. I'm present all places at the same time. You're not. That's why you're exhausted. And as long as you continue to be that God, they'll never need a real God. You that demigod. My wife used to get frustrated. She said, she said, she, she'd be like, we go places and you'd be like helping this person, helping this person, helping this person. She's like, I'm just standing there looking like. <laughs> what are you not saying no to that you need to start saying no to? Stop being so worried about hurting their feelings instead of protecting your purpose. My purpose is more important than your feelings. You get over your feelings. I can't get my purpose back. You go ahead and be mad at me. I'm cool with that. As long as he's glad, as long as he's happy with me. I live to please him, not to please you. I'm not a people pleaser anymore. 
I'm a God pleaser. Luke 10, 38 to 42. As Jesus and the disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted. There go that word again. By all the preparations that had to be done. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister left me to do the work all alone? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. If I, can, if, I, if, I, if I can say everybody's name in here right now, I would. You're worried about too many things. Yeah, I'm talking, I'm talking to you. I'm going to point it all out. You're worried about too many things. But few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will, be not, it will not, I'm sorry, it will not, it, and it will not be taken away from her. Mary chose to sit at his feet and... You worried about, I would get a call from Trey, and I would be frantic. I got, okay, he need, I would get a call from Zay, and I would be, and in the, in the areas, and God said, you worried about too many things, son. Just, you worried about too, am I, am I not God? Do you not believe in me? Like, you, 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 you believe in me, but, but do you live according to the, to, to the way? Are you truly a Christian? Are you a follower? Or are you just a believer? Y'all missed that. <laughs> are you a follower or are you a believer? You can say you believe in Jesus Christ, but do you follow Jesus Christ? When, 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 when you look at football teams and, and basketball teams, the, the, the true fans, you can be playing 12 hours away, they show up. I was at, I was at a Northwestern game with this dude, like 70 years old. He's like, man, what, who's your son? I said, oh, man, he's a great player. I said, oh, who, who do you got on the team? Oh, nobody. You live here? No, we, we live about 10 hours away. What you at the game for, bro? Oh, we, we went to Northwestern back in 1950, and uh, we just support. We go to all the games. We're teaching ticket holders. Oh, you a follower. <laughs> you a follower. We, you, you know my son, height, weight, what, what hometown he's from. You, you, you bleed Northwestern because you, when you committed to Northwestern, you was committed. It didn't change when you graduated. Oh, yeah, I missed that. It didn't change when you were done. It didn't change when people changed. And when you committed, you stay committed even when you get exhausted. Principle number three. Let's get prepared to get out of here. Some of us are not consumed with sin, but with the sin of being consumed. I want to pause for a second because some of y'all need to, need to read that again. Some of us are not consumed with sin, but with the sin of being consumed. Put your hand in your chest and say, is that me? <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> is that, excuse me, is that me? Did I just belch? Excuse me, is that, was that me? you like, Pastor, I, I'm not, I, I don't commit adultery. Like, I don't be swearing. I don't be backbiting. I don't be doing. Do, you might not, but are you somebody consumed with the sin of being consumed? You're just trying to, you, you so, you're just a busybody. You want to take care of everything. You, it's, you, you're consumed with trying to be God to everybody on earth. Let me give you a marching orders. Production strategy, Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Here's your production strategy. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that no longer entangles. So I want to pause because I want to teach, right? So, 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 so it says throw off everything that hinders and the sin. So most of us only focus on the sin, but we don't realize there's something else that hinders besides the sin. So everything that hinders and the sin. So stop just focusing on your sins, but ask yourself, what else am I doing that, that, that's not necessarily sinful, but it's not necessary? And let us run with perseverance, endurance. The race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured. 
Pastor, why do we need competitive stamina? Because Jesus Christ, if, if Jesus Christ did, then why? For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Who? Who? We're going to break this production strategy down step by step. Take notes, take pictures. Number one is who? Me and everybody else. I don't get a pass. <laughs> you don't get, but pastor, my mama, you don't get a pass. But pastor, my daddy, you don't get a pass. You don't get a pass. But pastor, I got MS, you don't get a pass. Pastor, I got stage three kidney disease, you don't get a pass. Pastor, my husband, you don't get a pass. My wife, you don't get a, you don't get a pass. There's somebody going through more than you and still doing more than you. I'm, I'm not trying to be insensitive. Some of you are going through a lot right now. But somebody going through more than you and they're still produ producing. Well, I want to take a break. I'm, I'm not coming to church for a while because I'm, I'm upset. Okay, do you. I'm not going to be on my post because I'm in a bad mood. Okay, do you. You don't get a pass. You don't get a pass. As Carl loves it, when I always say it, it's either God's plan or God's permission. So whatever you're going through, either God planned it or God allowed it. So you telling God you don't trust him? You telling God you, 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 you can't do your, you can't tell God you can't own your responsibility when you're going through a little trial and tribulation? You do not get a pass. You don't. We, we, we at the hospital, uh, Dr. Simone, and, and, and they're like, we, 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 we doing stuff with Aries, and they like, they looking at us like, y'all like, do know she got cancer. I'm like, you, you know she's a child of God. Oh, we're going to take care of her. We're going to love on her. Well, you do know she got cancer. You do know we got standards. Please, thank you, excuse me. But she got cancer, so we got God. I'm not changing the standard because it's something that God can. It's a God problem. If it's a God problem, the standard don't change. God don't change. God don't sleep, no slumber. God the same guy he was yesterday and today. God still sit on his throne. So if God's on his throne, my standard don't change. It don't change. What? Throw off everything that hinders and the sin that entangles. Number three, run with stamina. And then lastly, fix your eyes on Jesus. So the question is, right, first of all, it's who? It's me. It's you. I don't get a pass. Number two, what must I do? I had to throw off everything that hindered. Look at your life and say, what's hindering me from producing? Look at your life and say, what's hindering me from moving forward? Number two, wait, what is the sin that I have that's had me, that has me entangled, that has me in bondage? What's that sin that has you in bondage, that's holding you back? Number three, we got to run with stamina. Number four, fix your eyes on Jesus, not the problem. It's not about what you see. It's about what you see. When? I love this one right here. Now. Nah. Somebody say now. Nah. Come on, somebody say now. Nah. 86,400 seconds in a day. Live like, pray like, act like, produce like, there is no tomorrow. Do you realize you can change your life in 86,400 seconds? Do you realize you can change your family's legacy in 86,400 seconds? You can do one thing that can change everything. So your mindset must be, I do everything like it's the most important thing because anything can change everything. I truly believe that anything that I do can change everything. So whatever my hand finds to do, I do with all my might. It is a short sprint, not a marathon. Where? The race marked out for me. If it's in front of me, it's for me. You, you ever go through something, you be like, man, God must have made a mistake. Like, I, God, you, God, like, no, I, I allow that to be in front of you. I allow you to get fired. I allow your, your wife to have Arnold Kiari. I, I, I allow, I, yep, I allow that. God, God, you, you, God, you see, you see this? God, like, yeah, I see it. 
I'm, I'm omniscient. I'm all-knowing. I, I see it. If it's in front of me, it's for me. It's for me to get through it. It's for me to overcome it because it's going to make me stronger. It's going to make me wiser. But it's not just to learn the lesson. It's to master the lesson. And the most important question most of us are asking is why. I'm surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. I'm more than a witness. I'm the standard. I need you to write that down. I am more than a witness. I'm the standard. To the word of God declares we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. I want you to look at it from two perspectives. Number one, there's somebody watching you. And you say you're a Christian, which means you represent God. And so if they're watching you and they're watching how you respond to certain things, you're telling them the standard you live by according to the word of God. But I don't want to be a person who just witnesses greatness. I want to be a person who produces greatness. I want to be more than a witness. I want to be a standard for somebody else. I want to read something to you that I got the other day and read part of it, not all of it for the sake of time and for the sake of the person that said it. I, I was at a school all day the other day and, 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 the, and the, the, the message says, making an impact. And the person said, I just wanted to drop you a quick thank you your way. Thank you for allowing, thank you for following God's path for yourself. The impact you are making is immeasurable. I want to pause I, and I want, you to, I want you to understand that I was at a school so I didn't mention God one time. You know what I'm saying, Sandra? Like, I didn't preach. I, 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 didn't, I didn't go to scripture, nothing like that. But, 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 but Maurice, she said, thank you for following God's path. Like, oh, how, you know, how you know I work with God? Like, did God tell you? Uh, that's my homeboy. She put, I enjoy all three of your talks today, but there were a few things that stood out to me. I was presently surprised at the amount of kids that wanted to talk to you after the sessions. In particular, the kids at the particular school who were labeled kids, a demographic that often gives up, probably because they feel like the world has already given up on them. So to see them so engaged and then hear them talk afterwards was so encouraging, they were inspired, and I think every one of them walked away feeling a little bit better about themselves. After the last session, I drove home some of my son's friends, and he came over from the middle school. I really enjoyed hearing their thoughts and enthusiasm. My son asked me if I would be his accountability person. The last story the person shared with me was about their daughter going through some difficult things, and their daughter wasn't at school that day because of what she's going through. And she told me that she told her daughter about my message. And when her daughter heard the message through her mother, they both embraced and began to cry. And her daughter began to tell her some of the trauma she's been experiencing. And her daughter told her stuff she's never told her before about what she's experienced. She said her daughter had a breakthrough in that night, not because she heard me, but because of what her mother said she heard. Your obedience is connected to somebody's breakthrough. Your obedience connected to somebody's breakthrough. Stop just being a witness. Be the standard. Oh, I saw her get blessed. You get blessed. Oh, I saw her bless somebody. You bless somebody. You, you, you're not here to be a witness to Michael Jordan, to be a witness to, 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 to each of the hip hop preacher. You, you, you're here to also change the world. We all have a gift inside of us to change the world. It's our responsibility. Pastor doesn't preach for us to be like him. He does it so we can go out there and also be the standard. It's our response. Somebody needs you to be the standard. You are somebody's blessing. You're not here just to live and die. You're here to give somebody a breakthrough. But you need competitive stamina. You have to endure the trials and tribulations because if you quit too soon, somebody's not going to get their blessing. And I read that story to you because the place that I spoke at yesterday was seven years in the making. 
Seven years in the making, Camille. I spoke at a, 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 a Miley at Michigan State seven years ago. The person that heard me seven years ago is the same person that brought me in to speak yesterday. Seven years. And the speech I gave seven years ago was a speech I gave when I was first really, really getting into professional speaking. And it was a free speech, Sandra. And I thought nothing would come of it. But I said, I'm going to give my all to these kids. And seven years later, she's like, I heard how much you charge. We did fundraisers. We raised the money. We prepared. I've been trying to bring you in for seven years, and today is the day. Seven is the number of completion, in case you didn't know that. I'm more than a witness. I'm the standard. I leave you with this. How? Begin with the end in mind. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Jesus Christ endured the cross because of the joy that was set before him. So you have to fix your eyes on the joy that's before you, not on the problem that's in front of you. You got to fix your eyes on knowing that God will and God can bring you through whatever you're going through. You have to have competitive stamina. You can't quit. You can't give up. You can't give in because you're blessed on the other side of that struggle. Not on the front side, but on the other side of your struggle. So your mindset has to be that no matter what I have to do, I'm going to be who I'm supposed to be. I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be because somebody's dependent upon me. I'm the answer to somebody's prayer. So when God calls on me, I will be ready because God's going to use me to bless somebody else. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life. Father, we thank you for health and for strength, Father. Father, some of us in this room, Father, have been struggling, Father, with enduring, Father. We get tired, Father. Mentally, emotionally, physically, Father, whether it be frustration, Father, or tired of just pressing forward, Father. And so, Father, at the sound of my voice, Father, those, those people in the room, right, you, you don't got to come forward, but if you're in a room and, you, and, and, and you're hearing this prayer and you're saying, God, I, I'm one of those that, that, that needs competitive stamina. I need to have more endurance. If that's true, you're standing to your feet. I, I want you to stand so, so, so you can so you can be acknowledged by God. I, like, like you, you're saying, God, like, like, it's not that I don't want it, Father. It's, it's not that I don't believe, Father. But sometimes I get tired, Father. I get frustrated, Father. And, and, and I need that stamina, Father, with my children, Father, with, with, with my spouse. I need the stamina to keep going, Father. To keep pushing, Father. To keep believing, Father. To keep fighting, Father. To keep pressing towards the mark of a higher calling. I'm standing, Father, because I need the strength to endure. I need the competitive stamina, Father. I, I, I don't want to stop when it gets difficult, Father. I don't want to hesitate, Father. I, I want to continue to press. I want to press. I want to press. I want to press, Father. And when I'm tired, Father, lift me up, Father. I need people around me, Father, who don't just celebrate me, Father, but they correct me, Father. They challenge me, Father. Because according to your word, I will receive what I'm destined to receive if I faint not, if I don't give up, if I don't get weary in well-doing, Father. They don't deserve my kindness, Father. Help me to give them kindness anyway, Father. They don't deserve my forgiveness. Help me to give them forgiveness anyway, Father. They don't deserve my love. Help me to give them love anyway, Father. Help me, Father. Help me. Help me be who you birthed me to be. I will exercise competitive stamina. I will not give up. I will not give in. I will not turn back. I will outlast whatever I have to outlast. So what I'm supposed to have comes to pass. In Jesus' name, let every believer say, amen, amen. We really appreciate you spending your day with us. 
And we look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday evenings at 6 for Wednesday Night Word with Pastor T.J. Tyus. For all of our announcements, upcoming events, and special programming, please visit our social media pages on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Your tangible support of this ministry makes all the difference in the world, and we can't thank you enough for your commitment. If you'd like to support this ministry, please use our cash app at dollar sign APOC Global. If you prefer a more traditional approach, visit our website at www.apocministry.org. On behalf of pastors Thomas and Tyus, their wives and families, and the whole of your A Place of Change ministry family, until we meet again, be blessed. Be blessed.